What's going on guys? We are back with another video. It is very late at night right now. I edited the entire night last night, fished the entire day today, and I'm rigging rods in the boat, scrolling through YouTube comments late at night, and uh, wanted to make a quick video. And it's something that you guys ask for a lot. It's uh, basically about rods. You know, what kind of action rods do you do this with? Do you want a medium heavy? Do you want a medium light? Do you want a medium extra fast? A lot of different questions um, about rod actions. And I don't want to overcomplicate anything in this video. I don't want to make this seem too far over anybody's head. I don't want to make it feel like you guys have to go out and buy a $500 rod. I don't want to make it feel like you would have to go out and buy a $100 rod if you don't want to, right? But if you are getting into walleye fishing, um, if you've maybe been into walleye fishing or getting more serious into walleye fishing, these are kind of the three models of rods that are kind of must-haves in my book um, as far as what you want. Um, that can kind of fish a lot of different presentations, right? Um, sure, can you get by with one rod? Absolutely, you can get by with one rod and do anything you want and go catch a ton of fish and have a ton of fun. But um, if you want to kind of up your game a little and uh, kind of the cool part about a lot of rod manufacturers in the last several years is they're starting to make technique specific rods, right? And uh, you know, as you know, walleye fishermen get smarter and rod manufacturers get smarter, they're making models that fit our needs, right? And uh, that's a great thing. So these, like I said, these are the three pretty much must-have walleye rods um, that you know that I want in my boat at all times, right? And we're not talking about necessarily um, trolling planer boards and stuff like that today. We're talking about like you know your spinning rods for the most part, right? Most of us are probably spinning rod guys if we're walleye anglers, besides some random trolling application stuff for the most part. So don't feel like you have to spend a ton of money on a rod. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy anything I'm talking about. Um, but look for these attributes that I'm talking about when I talk about a model and why I like that and find a rod um, that fits your price point that you like and that has those attributes. And you're gonna be much happier with the style of fishing you're gonna do with that rod. So we're gonna dive right into it. Like I said, three rods. The first one, um, this is a 6'9 medium fast. Now, what do I use this for? This is my power jig fishing rod. I do a lot of power fishing stuff with this rod, right? Now, this is the heaviest rod in the lineup that I have, um, that I use day in, day out. Now, what do I do with this rod? I snap jig and jig a lot of heavy lures. Um, something like this right here. This is a 3 8 ounce Google Eye jig with a snap minnow on there, uh, or jerk minnow on there. I do a lot of stuff like this. So I'm snap jigging in the spring with like a quarter ounce. I'm using this, right? Um, if I'm doing jigging wrapping, I like this rod also. I'll kind of fluctuate between mono and braid. But the reason this is this medium fast um, versus having a rod that is softer than this is because when you were really cracking on this bait, and we'll kind of air some footage right here, when you're cracking on this bait, you don't want that tip to go woo 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 right? After you snap it, you want that thing to be clean and crisp. Snap, pop, you know, snap, that bait pops up. You want it to be very responsive like that. And because generally I'm fishing bigger baits on this rod, um, like this is the same rod I throw a lot of rapala ripping wraps on in the summer months, uh, or in the spring months in Green Bay when I'm down there, um, and in the summer months sometimes the fish are real aggressive. Um, you know, this is meant for fishing heavier baits. It's meant for throwing them far, working them hard, and uh, setting the hook hard. And this is a great rod. I've absolutely fallen in love with this rod. This is a 6'9", medium, fast. And one thing you'll kind of notice if you go back and forth between rod manufacturers is, um, you know, one rod might be a 6'9", medium, fast. And a rod in a different model might be a 6'9", medium, light from a different company. Both those rods might feel the same, right? Um, but basically what you want is you don't want a ton of tip play in these rods, right? You want them relatively tight up top. You can see this rod's obviously flexing, but it doesn't have a ton of load throughout the rod. And it's not going to load up a lot when I'm fishing a heavier bait, right? Versus if you took a medium light or a light action rod and tried to fish these bigger presentations, as you're working that bait and snapping it, that rod's going to flex like this. This one's going to flex about like that, right? So it's very clean, very crisp, and if you do hit a fish, if a fish hits you while you're on the bottom, you almost hook that fish on the next snap, versus if you're fishing a real soft rod, what happens a lot is that rod's just going to load up like that, right? It's going to be much more difficult to do those snappy, aggressive presentations on a very soft rod um, versus something like this. So this is the rod I use for a lot of my power fishing application stuff. Look for something that's 6'8 to like 7 foot medium fast, right? 
and some rods you might be able to get with like a medium extra fast too. Um, this is kind of my preference on this. And this is just a great all around rod, right? You can like drag tubes for smallmouth with a combo like this. Um, you could do a lot of different bass applications with a rod like this. A lot of different walleye applications with a rod like this. But normally if I'm bombing big stuff around, fishing for big hungry walleyes, this is the setup that I'm using. So um, something that fits something like this, you know, stay away from your medium lights if you're looking to get into something that's a snap jig rod. And on this, I'm pretty much always running, unless I'm fishing a jig and wrap, pretty much always running 10 or 15 pound braid down to a fluorocarbon leader. And uh, most of the time I tie in like 10 or 12 pound leads, sometimes higher, depending on kind of what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. But that's a pretty simple standard issue power fishing jig setup, right? I don't fish a lot of live bait on this combo. This is meant for my big artificial stuff that I'm chucking around. So that kind of wraps up that one as your first rod and it's something 6'9", 6 6'10", 6 6 medium fast, something like that. Um, that's kind of rated a little bit more and I can look at see what this one's rated for. Um, let's see here, 1 8 to 1 half, right? Something in that size that's definitely rated for some of your bigger stuff, right? So moving on, what's the next one? Now here's another rod that I use as a jig rod, but has a ton of different applications you can do with it, right? And this is like your live bait jig rod. Um, your length can probably vary a little bit more on this. I tend to like a little bit longer rods um, when I'm fishing live bait, and I'll kind of get to that. But this is a 7.3 medium light fast, right? I, whenever I'm fishing live bait, I generally like that little bit lighter action because it gives me a little bit more play in the tip. And you're going to see the difference right away between the last two rods. Look how that rod loads in the tip. A lot more tip play in this rod, right? And that's because that's that medium light. It's going to load up a little bit farther down and it's going to take less weight overall to load up. Now, the reason I like, you know, a lot of guys might like their six foot or their six foot six for fishing live bait. I do, a lot of times I'm fishing live bait, I'm doing a lot of casting, right? And it, uh, the shorter you have a rod, the harder you have to throw something to get it out there. Where a longer rod like this, in this seven foot, seven three, you know, style, um, it, it helps get that bait out there without having to whip that thing and chance throwing a crawler off, throwing your minnow off. And what do I have rigged up on this rod right now? Pretty much what almost always stays on this rod is an eighth ounce jig, right, for fishing live bait. Um, this week I've been fishing crawlers deep and just kind of pulling them along. I've been doing this on Mille Lacs. I've been doing this around Hayward. Um, a great technique, obviously, in the summer. In the spring, I'm throwing a fathead on there. Um, you know, there's a, in the fall, I'm going to be throwing a sucker minnow on here, maybe go up to a quarter ounce here. Um, but this is my favorite live bait rod. And the reason in a live bait rod, especially with the jig application, you want load in the tip is so that if that fish hits and you don't feel it, when you start that next jig stroke, What's going to happen is that you can load that tip up a little bit and feel that fish on there, right? And then you know you have to set the hook before just slowly pulling up and starting that next jig. Most of us aren't snap jigging live bait because that's generally your bait just falls off. Um, so when you go to pick up that bait again, you want a little bit of softness there that, that medium light provides. Um, so basically you can sense that fish and then set the hook versus just jigging it right out of his mouth pretty much. So that's kind of the setup there. Once again on this rod I have a Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000 um, with 10 pound braid and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. You don't have to go heavy on this because it's almost impossible to put 10 pounds of pressure on a fish um, with a setup like this, right? This is kind of your finesse uh, but not crazy light action rod. Now even though this is a medium light, you can catch 10, 12 pound walleyes on this, no problem. Uh, we've got plenty of muskies accidentally on this stuff. Um, so you, what you don't want is basically a rod that's gonna flex a lot down in here. You definitely want a rod that's gonna have some tip play. And generally, most of the rods that I've fished with in my life that I like doing this with are kind of that 6'10", 7 foot, 7'2", this one's a 7'3", in that medium light action, right? And uh, this, this is my number one live bait jig rod. 100% hands down. Now, what else can you do with this? Well, you can really cast a lot of real finessey things with this. Um, this is a great rod for like, you know, like fishing a Ned rig on a light head for smallmouth. Um, you could even like drop shot with this rod. It's a great rod for doing a lot of different things. And uh, it definitely takes the cake for me as far as my favorite, um, yeah, like I said, live bait jig rod. So that's a 7.3 medium light, fast action. Um, I really like this rod, super light. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that one. If you're looking for a live bait jig rod, look for something that fits what I was just talking about, right? And uh, one thing you're gonna see with this rod before we kind of go on to the next one 
is like I said, it loads a lot in the tip, but I don't have a lot of load like right in the in the midsection of this rod, right? This rod still has a lot of backbone for setting the hook on a long cast, right? And that is why it's a great jig rod. Now, kind of moving on. This is the one that is the most finessey and probably the most unique um, of, of each of these three rods, but it's one rod that I would not not want to have in my boat, right? So this is a basically my live bait rigging rod. This is my slip bobber rod, my Lindy rigging, um, and a lot of things like that where I'm fishing live bait in more of a stationary sense. And this is a seven six medium light action rod. Now this rod, we'll kind of air some footage right here, but it loads up very deep into the rod. Like here's me catching the fish on a Lindy rig. This is also, like I said, the rod I use for slip bobbers. And the reason I like this little bit of extra length on a rod that does these two things in the seven and a half foot is because of this long sweeping hooks that you get. Whether you're fishing a slip bobber, whether you're fishing a lindy rig, one thing stays the same. When you go to catch up to that fish, you want that big long sweep because a lot of times you're not sure if you're, you know, you already have a direct line to that fish or if that fish is running around with lindy rig or if the same thing with a slip bobber. You're not sure if you got that, you know, that bobber all the way down and you have a direct hook set, but having that real long sweeping swing helps a ton when it comes to hooking fish on these presentations. I have a Lindy rig tied up on here right now, and this combination has been catching a lot of fish for me in the past week. And the reason I like a medium light versus like a straight medium is the same thing. A lot of times when I'm fishing live bait, especially rigging, um, I really like to have even a softer tip than I do um, like with the jig rod, with my live bait jig rod, right? And the reason for that is I wanna be able to load this tip up and tell when I'm getting stuck in rock I want to have, be able to have that tip load up a lot, you know, and a lot of times when you get bit on a Lindy rig, what happens is that thing will load up and you'll feel it go dunk, 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 and that's right when you open up that bale, let that fish run, right? And then obviously eventually close the bale, reel down and crack that fish. And this rod has plenty of power and plenty of swing to catch fish um, when you're rigging. This is also the rod that I do a lot of, hand, like when I'm pulling spinners by hand, like here's a great clip here. And the reason I like this rod is the same reason I like it for everything else I do with this rod. It's that I can hold that rod way outside the boat. It's a longer spinning rod, seven and a half foot long. And that rod is constantly loaded up under the pressure. I got a ton of sensitivity. And when that fish bites on the spinner, what happens is almost the same thing when I bite on Lindy rig. Generally what happens is that rod's gonna, you're gonna feel that fish go dunk, 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 dunk. He doesn't know he's hooked yet, but he's already pretty much, you know, as good as caught. Because what, what you want is that rod to load up slow, fish doesn't sense it, doesn't sense it, doesn't sense it. You do that big swing forward and he's already got it, right? A too stiff of a rod, that fish is going to feel a lot of pressure, right, when he bites that bait, right? Because you're moving away from that fish. So that is kind of why I like these longer, softer, seven and a half um, foot rods for doing a lot of this rigging type stuff, a lot of this pulling spinners by hand type stuff, and a lot of my slip bobber stuff. Well, hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, you know, you don't have to go out and buy these rods. I'll go ahead and link them down below if you want to check some of this stuff out. But, you know, we get asked a ton of questions on a lot of this stuff. And if you are looking to pick up a rod for any of these applications, or maybe all of these applications, um, look for a rod that has these attributes, um, you know, depending on obviously what, you know, void you want to fill in your walleye arsenal, right? And uh, you should be on the right track. Is any of this cut and dry, black and white? This is what everybody's going to say. Absolutely not. These are the rods that I like for doing what I do, and uh, it covers a very wide variety of the walleye spectrum, right? Um, there's not a whole lot you can't do with any of these rods. In fact, there's pretty much nothing you can't do um, besides maybe pull a planer board behind the boat. But thank you guys for watching. Um, i got to finish rigging rods and get on the road early in the morning for another adventure. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more.